Good morning everybody. Um, happy Sunday. I hope you're all feeling well. I had hoped to get online a little bit earlier this morning. Oh, excuse my finger there. I had hoped to get online a little bit earlier this morning um, uh, that you could all watch me from the bed, but uh, I didn't make it. So um, maybe there's still a few of you living your best lives still having a cup of tea in bed watching this. So if you are, hello. Say hello to me if you're out there. Sometimes you can feel like you're talking into um, outer space at this stuff. So... Um, God, it's been really wet here this week and we went for a walk yesterday down near our, our local lake and the water is awful high. Um, so you, you'd be worried for people living in uh, flood prone areas this winter. I hope it stops raining soon because um, it's not good for gardens, but it's not good for houses either. So fingers crossed it stops. Um, I'm going to have to learn an awful lot more about how to garden in very wet conditions because it doesn't look like it's going to go away. I went uh, weeding yesterday and, um, my gosh, oh, that's me in the greenhouse. Sorry about the door banging there. Um, yeah, anyway, I was weeding and it was more muck coming up than plant, so I had to abandon it. Uh, yeah, couldn't couldn't bring you out there now for a live because it's a disgrace to the nation with the weeds. So um, we're back in the greenhouse this morning. So what I'm going to talk about is overwintering geraniums. Um, this really doesn't apply just to geraniums. It's also to um, dianthus, really. Um, you can overwinter an awful lot more plants than I would ever bother doing. Um, I'll only bother doing this if uh, there's a few criteria that need to be met. First of all, um, have I got somewhere to put them? Now, I have a greenhouse, I'm very lucky, but I only have it the last year or two. So before that, I used to have one of those little mini cold frame greenhouses that you see, they come up um, for sale on um, in Lidl and Aldi, but lots of garden centres have them as well. Um, I used to have that. And before that, I just used to pull a few bits in at the back of the shed where it's sheltered. So if you don't have any greenhouse or conservatory which would also work or sunroom or something like that um you can still pull it in close to the house any kind of a concrete wall or brick wall because um stone and concrete and all those um, substances hold the heat better and they don't actually get the frost um so uh yeah definitely worth uh looking at that if you want to try doing this it's well worth chance and putting it in at the side of the shed so i'm gonna to have to close this door just bear with me one second sorry everyone you'll see my little geranium here and anyway. look at it there isn't it really gorgeous oh sorry about that um so i'm back so yeah, so as I was saying, if you don't have a greenhouse or a sunroom or a conservatory or one of those little um, mini greenhouses that you can get uh, from Lidl or Aldi or Amazon or some um, any place, uh, you can put them in close to a concrete or brick wall because the heat, they retain the heat a lot better and the frost doesn't affect those areas as much. So if you, you, you know, you can still chance doing it. Um, I only bother doing it with geraniums and dianthus, which are like little carnations. The only reason I do it with those is because they have a fairly good chance of survival. I can't be bothered doing this unless it's going to work. Um, I, you know, you can do it with an awful lot more, but they're the only ones that I even attempt it with. So, um, I wouldn't be ask. I wouldn't be suggesting anyone to do it unless I had thought of there was a fairly good um, chance of success. So um, I do it with those. And the reason why it's, it can be a good idea to do it with those is because you start off next year with plants for your hanging baskets or your pots that are bigger in size. So instead of starting from scratch with puny little things that you buy, the plugs that you buy in the multi packs or growing them from seed, you start off with a fairly decent plant at the beginning of it. Now, the other little ones are growing around it, but at least you're starting from a better standing point because they can look a bit measly when you plant them up first so this is one trick for that so that's why i do it uh, it's fairly good chance of success it's minimum hassle and um it does actually benefit you at the start of the season because the minute the chance of frost has passed these guys will be grand back outside again so here i am with the geranium this this was overwintered last year as well so you can see look at it's getting really big which is brilliant um yeah so you can see it's fairly decent sized. 
and all you, you don't need to do much except cut it back right so the flowers are fading here so I cut these all back um, back to the stock and delete and break off the sage take off about a third so that'll help it come back bushier as well so when you are taking off a third of it um, if you can see that there I'm going to take off that little branch that's gone so you put back to where there's other leaves meeting the stem. That encourages it to basically sprout out from that point. So if you can see there, here's three other little baby leaves. Can you see that? Oh, you can. Three other little baby leaves there, and I'm after cutting to that point. So it's suggesting to the plant to grow out more branches from there. So you'd have a bushier, even bigger plant then when it does start growing again in the spring. So I'm taking off all these bits. Obviously, any withered leaves can go on their merry way. Um, I have seen other people suggest about um, putting one or two into brown paper bags um, and putting them in, like taking off all the soil and putting them into a brown paper bag in the shed like you might do with a uh, dahlia tuber but that's too much hassle for me. I uh, am looking for an easy life. And the reason why, right, it's not just that I'm totally lazy, which I grant you could be part of it. It's not just that. It's that I think you're more likely as a beginner to stick in the stay at gardening and enjoy it more if you're not doing all these extra jobs that make it hardship so um i'm a no hardship merchant this is supposed to be something nice to do not an extra work we've enough to be doing so that's why i'm always looking for the handiest way out of it because i think you're more likely to stay gardening so oh. These guys are definitely ready to go, they're falling off themselves. Obviously they're all fit for the compost heap. So if you have one or your green bin, I think I'll take off this bit here. This branch doesn't seem to be doing, it's a bit measly. I'm going to take it off. So you do have to be brave sometimes. And think of the bigger picture but I'm hoping that might encourage it to grow a bit more out that way because it's a bit one-sided any other faded flowers I'll just look it over I'm not taking anything more off that branch because it's lovely the way it's growing and the rest of it looks okay and that is it now geraniums, even at the best of times, geraniums only like the slightest bit of water, so you wouldn't be watering it much. Um, I keep it in my greenhouse. My greenhouse is not heated. Uh, so if it does get very, very cold, which looks like it's a long way off yet here, but if it does get very, very cold, I might have to think about putting a sheet of cardboard over it for a night um, if it's very frosty. But like that would only be extreme measures because look at the end of the day if you lose a geranium they're not the dearest plant in the world to replace it's not like you know my uh life's mission to mine to mine these but if i can if i can i will so i actually have a load of them i don't know if you can see this i'm going to take this out of its little spot and show you here so i have mm, no that's not the way to show you this way so I have loads of them to cut back yet um, and I have a lot of dianthus as I was saying and those are the ones that I think it's worthwhile doing with an awful lot of the others I wouldn't think it is. So I hope you found that helpful. There it is, my little, little nude geranium and I'll just pop it on the shelf and that's it for the winter and I hope you have a lovely Sunday and um, actually before I go um, I have a lady called Dahlia Hawley coming into the group on Wednesday evening to talk about skincare for people who work outdoors, something you might really be interested in, um, you know, uh, when the weather is getting colder and it, it's harder on the hands and, and face. So definitely you can check her out if you're around. And if you didn't catch it during the week, I had my friend Caroline from Abundant Edible Gardens come on and do a talk about no dig and vegetable gardening and answering some queries for some of the members of the group. So that's another one that the recording is down in the messages. It's worth checking out. And Caroline's group is um, Abundant Edible Gardens, I think. And her uh, she was doing um, a challenge during the week about drawing your own um, plan of a garden. Uh, using Google Earth which was really cool and if you have a chance it's worth checking it out I think she has some really 
um, handy shortcuts and I'm all about the shortcuts. So that's it, definitely, this time. Have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye.